Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. What an opportunity to share with you this message. It's always a privilege, brothers and sisters. We don't take it for granted because once you are illuminated, once your eyes have been touched to see what the gospel is, it will eventually become your preoccupation. You will find yourself interested eternally. You don't get used to it. You are always amazed by the beauty of the gospel. So it is a privilege then every time we have an opportunity to share with you this beautiful, wonderful message. Martin Ruther once said that he wanted to always preach this message lest he might forget it. He thought as he's sharing, he's also reminding himself of this wonderful message. So it is a blessing then to have this privilege and share with the body of Christ what happened what happened in the person and the work of Jesus Christ that we see the implication of his person and work as an eternal eternal that means it has no beginning and has no end and the whole world it needs to come to know this i found out that at some point people will, will be will get bored who you have questions in life and you have unanswered questions. You might ignore some realities today, but that does not mean that at a given point you will not stop for a moment and think or try to find solutions of what we see here on the earth, in your personal life, in asking certain questions about life, past, present, and future. See, one of the things that I've discovered about the gospel is it answers hard questions. It explains the enigmas. It reveals the mysteries. It illuminates your path. You are illuminated. And you discover the meaning of who man who man is and who God is. You know, there's such a satisfaction that is beyond words, beyond measure, which you find in the gospel that you will never find anywhere else. The answers we get from the gospel satisfy, satisfies our, our being, our longings. To the extent that everything about you will literally speak to you 
in vibration. Say that it has been satisfied. I have never found, I've never seen, I've never saw anything that can redefine, transform, satisfy, build someone's life as the gospel. So it is a privilege. So brothers and sisters, I pray for you wherever you are probably this message is just another message to you probably to you it is an ordinary and you're used to an ordinary thing and you're used to it as something of no greater value but i'm telling you you need a revelation your revelation of this wonderful message that has throughout the ages stood the test of time and proven to have been the outstanding message that transformed humanity like no none other. We might have Christianity, which is now mixed into religion. But one of the things we have to ask ourselves is not so much of uh, uh, the propaganda or the colonial systems that is, were established in the world and that Christianity came on the wings of that system which gives it the power to have taken ascendancy all over the world as it is today. It is more of the mystery, the beauty, the life, the reality The creator being revealed, the love that is manifested through this message that has captured the minds of people, that has taken over the hearts of men, that whoever truly, authentically encountered this message was genuinely transformed. So it is more than a religious human invention or creation to convince other men through its ideology. It is rather something to shout about something more, it's more than what we can explain. It is catchy in itself. It contains something that is beyond the presentation of it. The gospel is the power of God, the Bible says, and it gives what man yearns for, and that is salvation. Salvation means the totality of what man can or ever desire even much more this gospel presents and gives us be what we could not have achieved even if we had put all ourselves together romans chapter 10 verse 11 declares this he says for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be put shall not be ashamed the scripture bears me out it says no one who believes in him shall be disappointed the record supports this any person 
who places his confidence in him, the sun will not be shattered. Like I've been saying, we have the assurance that is more than what man can offer. That we have found the assurance of not being put to shame, of not being ashamed. So the scripture clearly says, for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So we are told that you cannot be put to shame. You cannot be ashamed if you believe on the name of the Lord. If you believe in him, the person and the work of Jesus will not be put to shame. Now, like I've been explaining, it is not, it's not, uh, you know, motivation speaking. Yes. You know, this is more than motivation speaking. Motivation speaking is to motivate you. And then tomorrow you you feel low. And then we have to motivate you. And then you feel low. Then we have to motivate you like that. But the Bible tells us the gospel is the power of God that produces, gives, offers salvation to whosoever that believes. So salvation is not motivation speaking. It is the healing you see, for instance, if somebody was sick and uh, is about to die and here comes a doctor and he's given a certain treatment and the person is healed, that is different from being motivated while he's still suffering on the sick bed. We are saying this is the real deal. This is amazing. You shall not be ashamed. So what, what, what else? Imagine a message that offers this confidence, this assurance that you will never be put to shame, that you will never be ashamed because you believe on him. See, it's a very complicated Greek word even to, to, to pronounce it, is katai sintesetai. So hard to even explain, you know, pronounce. It means to bring to shame, to humiliate, disgrace, disappoint. He's saying that you will never be disappointed. See, every man, every woman, every person needs assurance. And no one wants to be disappointed in the present or in the future. So imagine the message that gives you the assurance now and even in the time to come. All of us, we need something that we can lean on. We need somebody that we can lean on. We need to be sure that we are safe now and tomorrow. When you look at human lives and how people behave, how they live, people try to save for their future. People try to work for their future. But imagine in this message, he gives us the assurance, a very certain assurance that you will never be disappointed when if you believe if you believe in the person and the work of jesus christ you will never be pretty shame shalom shalom